Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackCrane79.com and I am back here with another hand history review for you guys. So today's hand was sent to me by Louie and as you can see there, he has pocket aces on the button in a 2 euro cent, 4 euro cent, uh, 6 max cash game. Although it should be noted as you guys can see there, there's only 5 players at the table. The other uh, very important thing to note right away is that Villain4, who is under the gun, has already posted. Um, also, he is sitting on a 25 big blinds to start the hand. As I've mentioned many, many times, guys, you should never, ever be posting a blind out of position like this. It makes absolutely no sense. It's like paying your taxes twice. All the guy had to do is wait one more hand, and the he could have just paid his big blind once. Instead, he's going to pay it on this hand and the very next hand. Um, I don't even need to look at HUD stats at this point. It's a guaranteed recreational player, the short stack, the posting from uh, under the gun. So just right away, we already have a dead read on this player. Um, and we also have the best hand in Hold'em. So that's kind of cool as well. So let's just jump right into this hand here. All right. So Villain 4, of course, checks his posted uh, blind. Villain 1 gets out of the way. So we're on the button with pocket aces. So what should we do? Well, I don't think I even need to talk about it at all. Of course, we're raising here. Um, I like Louie's decision to go to 20 cents, which is five times the big blinds. Uh, you know, three times, four times would be kind of standard here, but we definitely should add a little bit more because of the uh, player who's already uh, well posted into the uh, in, in the pot already, Villain 4. Um, so Villain 2, who is the small blind, he decides to flat call. Villain 3 gets out of the way, and Villain 4, of course, is going to make the call. Now, the other thing that I want to note before we move any further here, and I hope you guys already spotted this as well, is Villain 2 is, is deep stacked, as we are as well. So the effective stack size in this hand is going to be about 150 big blinds. And if you don't know what I mean by effective stack size, that means basically the lowest common denominator. We are sitting on 150 big blinds. Villain 4 is kind of irrelevant to the hand because he only has 25 big blinds. We're never folding pocket aces on any flop ever versus a stack size of 25 big blinds. Uh, but versus Villain 2, he covers us. We have 150 big blinds in front of us, so the effective stack size is 150 big blinds. I've made many deep stack videos before. 150 big blinds is what I would consider deep stacked, and it does change the complexion of the hand. We can't just stack off on any board with pocket aces. I mean, you typically don't do that uh, with 100 big blinds either, but with 150 big blinds, 200 and more, you need to be even more careful with what you're doing. So this is why, guys, I always mention the first thing you should be doing in any hand you ever play in poker is to look at these stack sizes before anything because that is going to shape how you're going to approach the hand. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's just get to the flop. So uh, we catch a very, very good flop for pocket aces. You really can't do much better than that. It's a queen, five, deuce, rainbow. Uh, there's not too much in the way of draws or anything scary on this board here. I mean, sure, there's three, four, you know, is an open-ended straight draw. Uh, there's a couple gut shots with like a ace three or something. Oh, it's difficult for anyone to have ace three because we have two aces in our hand. There's a queen up there, but there's not too many like two pair possibilities because most thinking decent players are not going to be playing queen five or queen deuce. They might be playing king queen or king queen jack or something like that so basically what i'm saying is there's not too many two pair possibilities so basically a very very uh nice nondescript extremely non-scary great board here for us with pocket aces and of course we're in the best seat in the history of no limit hold on the button so everything is just absolutely incredible so uh villain two checks right away villain four checks so it's on us on the button of course with pocket aces so what should we do here well I think if you guys have, you know, read any of my books, watch any of these videos, read my blog, you know I am 100% betting here. I think that slow playing is a very, very poor decision in a spot like this against two players um, for a million different reasons. Uh, some of the most important ones are that we are playing low stakes poker here where players just love to call. So 
what do you want to do against players who love to call? Well, you want to bet for value, of course, and we are in a clear, clear value betting situation. So Louie agrees with my decision uh, to bet. However, uh, I'm going to disagree with Louie's bet sizing. Uh, I think that half pot is definitely uh, not optimal in this situation. I think that we want to be betting a lot more as I talk about in Crushing the Microstakes, my first book. Um, versus recreational players in particular, I want to be betting something like 80% of the pot here. I'm just, I'm not getting into any of that sort of GTO balancing stuff against players like this. And typically um, against any player type at these stakes, because I just don't feel that they're on that level where they're even paying attention to what I'm doing in terms of my bet sizing strategy. So I think that betting half pot here, uh, you know, at much higher stakes against thinking opponents definitely does make sense to... Uh, balance your range so that you can do the same thing with bluffs, for instance. Um, but in this spot here at very low stakes against two likely, uh, well, one of them is definitely a recreational player. The other player, I never assume players are good at these stakes. You know, I, I think that we need to be betting it a lot more for value here. And we're just leaving money on the table by only half potting it here. So uh, Villain 2 does make the call. Villain 4 gets out of the way and we'll go to the turn. So the turn is the four of spades, the very unlikely ace three got there. Um, honestly, got, it's just not really a scary card at all. There's very few two pair possibilities. Um, so it's just it continues to be an incredible board for our hand. A clear, clear, just value bet, value bet. There's not even really much to think about. So villain two does check to us. And so it's on Luby again. And uh, like I said, I think this is a clear value bet situation. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of debate in the comments, although you guys can let me know later. And Louis decides to bet uh, an amount that I would consider a lot better in this situation. It looks to be about 75% of the pot or something like that. That's more like it. I would like to see that on the flop as well. The other reason I, I forgot to mention of why I like a bigger bet sizing on the flop as well is because it's like a snowball effect with the bet sizing on the three post flop streets. When you bet more on the flop, it makes the size of the pot on the turn a lot bigger, which in turn, sorry for the uh, bad pun there, allows you to bet more on the turn. And then as you see the logic bet more on the river because the, the pot size is bigger on the river and essentially it allows you to get stacks in the middle much, much easier. This is a huge reason why I heavily disagree with GTO based like half potting or betting 30% of the pot on the flop. I think it is a, an enormous mistake in low stakes games because it, it really prevents you from getting stacks in by the river. And, and this is really one of the biggest ways that guys that I've made a fortune in these low stakes games is by being able to stack people. And if we, if you're not putting enough money in on the earlier streets in the hand, you're never going to be able to get enough in on the later streets because in order to get it all in, you're going to have to be overbetting the pot if you're following my logic here. With that kind of tangent out of the way, I just want to say that, you know, the bet sizing here in the turn is better. I just would have liked to see more in on the flop so that we could be making a bigger bet uh, on the turn here. But anyways, uh, Villain 2 does make the call and let's go to the river there. So the river is another queen. Well, I mean, it's not the greatest card in the deck because, I mean, the range that we talked to him about in the beginning was that he could have some sort of queen uh, or he could have, there's not a whole lot else. There's, there's you know, some weak draws with a three, the very unlikely three, four. But I, I also failed to mention hands like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket jacks, you know, pocket sevens, any of these sort of middling pocket pairs. I do think that those hands are uh, legitimately in his range. It's possible a player like this has been hanging out with a hand like 5-6 the whole time, even 5-4, which we've now counterfeited on the river. So I think that while this isn't the greatest card in the deck, I do think that, and now of course we don't know anything about this player type here. Okay, and I actually forgot to mention the player type here. Louis did actually give me HUD data on Villain 2. By the way, if you want to learn how to get HUD data on your screen, there'll be a link in the description below. So Louis told me this guy is a 53253. Now that's VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor. Once again, those are HUD stats. So a player like this who is playing 53% of hands, which is what VPI refers to, raising with those 25%, uh, this is a clear recreational player. So I'm uh, sorry that I forgot to mention that earlier in the hand. That's going to give us 
a lot more perspective on what to do on the river here. So uh, now that we know there's a clear recreational player playing a lot more hands than he should be, um, I do think that there's a lot of hands in his range here that we can potentially be beating on the river. A queen is just a small percentage of those of, of his overall range. So uh, first things first, let's just see what he decides to do on the river. Villain two, he does check to us. So it's on Louis now, and again, with this uh, added information, this is a clear recreational player who's going to have a wide range in this hand, in this spot. Uh, he could definitely have a, a 5x hand, like a 5-4 or a 5-6, which we beat both of those hands. If a 5-7 could have a pocket 6s, pocket 7s, pocket 8s, pocket 9s, uh, pocket 10s, pocket jacks. Could even just... Uh, make a hero call with some sort of king high or ace high hand. I've seen it before many times with, you know, recreational players like this who are on tilt and just don't believe us. So I do think that there's uh, plenty of hands that, that could potentially call us here. Maybe even a 4x if he had a 3-4 uh, hand. That, you know, that hand does have a third pair or something there that might consider looking us up. So with all of that said, uh, basically what I'm suggesting here is that we do indeed make a value bet here. Um, now, if you've read some of my later books, like the Micro 6 Playbook, for instance, you know that I'm not a, a fan of a big bet here. Now, and this is basically because of what I was just talking about with his range. You know, we don't expect him to have a super strong hand here all that often, and he's not going to be going to be able to pay off a big bet. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make here is they'll bet $2 or 250 uh, and they're not really thinking through the player's range and understanding that he's not going to pay us off with any of these 5x or 4x uh, type hands or, or a pocket 7s or a pocket 8s. He's not going to pay a big bet off with those hands, but he is going to pay off a dollar or maybe a dollar fifty. So this is a spot where I do, uh, as opposed to the flop, which I discussed earlier, this is a spot where I actually do like a small bet of, say, 40% of the pot or maybe 50% of the pot. So maybe, you know, a dollar dollar 30, a dollar 40 here. I think that a lot of hands like say a king 5, a 5 6, a pocket 7s, a pocket 9s are going to be curious enough to look up those those bets uh, very very often, uh, especially with a recreational player like this. Now, Louis disagrees with me and he decides to check behind here. I do believe that that, that is a mistake in these low stakes hands. I think that you're leaving a lot of money on the table. And remember on the river, we need to make uh, better decisions. We need to make uh, excellent decisions on the river because this is when the bet sizes on average are the largest. You know, if we could have gotten, say, even a dollar thirty out of him here, well, that's like 30 big blinds. I mean, that's absolutely massive. Getting those extra bets in can absolutely be the difference between a big winning player and it's a break-even player. So... Um, I'm going to say that I do think this is a significant mistake here to uh, to just check behind and let him get off the hook and get a free showdown with a hand like pocket eights here. Now, in this, I know you guys want to see the results. Now, in this specific hand here, uh, you know, Louis going to look like a genius and I'm going to look like an idiot here. But remember, we don't play poker for one hand. We're playing against ranges in poker. We're playing against hundreds and thousands of examples of running this hand again and again and what is the what is the most profitable decision over the long run now in this specific hand of course the best decision was to check back on the river when we consider his entire range i think that a value bet a smaller value bet as i discussed i uh, is clearly the best play in this spot here but anyways that's about all i got for this hand as always i want to know what you guys think so let me know uh, your thoughts in the comments below on everything that I've talked about in this hand so far from pre-flop to flop. Let me know about the flop bet sizing. What do you guys think about that turn? And, and of course, let me know about the river. I think it's a very crucial part of this hand. Do you guys typically value bet on this river? Do you value bet big? Do you value bet small like I'm talking about? Um... Let me know your thoughts on that in the uh, the comments below. And if you guys like watching microstakes poker hand history reviews like this and strategy videos, make sure you give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel as, as I'm putting them out all the time. And lastly, if you want to know my complete strategy on how I crush small stakes poker games like this, make sure you download a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit in the Micros. It's the top link in the description below, and that'll give you my complete strategy like i said for beating these games so thanks a lot for watching guys this has been nathan williams with blackrain79.com